Good afternoon and um, many thanks for joining us on this session this afternoon. Um, just going to wait a couple of minutes just for the last few attendees to join. So if you don't mind uh, just holding for a couple of minutes, um, and we're just going to wait for uh, the last of the delegates to to start and join us. Many thanks. Right, many thanks for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, today's webinar is entitled APM in the Modern Workspace. My name is Damien Schill um, and uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, what APM is um, and how we can use it. So many thanks for, for taking the time out of your schedules today to come and um, join us today. So a little bit about myself. Um, I've been, uh, as a terrible picture uh, shows, um, I've been in IT for about 15 years now. Um, started off in a computer workshop um, and learned the nuts and bolts of my trade, literally, and then uh, migrated into um, the uh, IT department within the local government and uh, worked from the desktop and the and the server teams um, and really got my introduction to system center uh, from the desktop side from the uh, support side and then from um, the other parts of the application suite uh, within server uh, side specifically uh, operations manager um, where i was responsible for the for the entire uh, scom infrastructure um, we su supported uh, just under a thousand machines and network devices and all those sorts of things um, uh, since then i've been uh, roughly four years in consulting now um, uh, pri primarily on SCOM and service manager uh, orchestrator um, and Azure Inf um, automation now as well and I really find that uh, I really like the way that we do things here at Power on Platforms because we we use the product as it is intended to be used and, and what we're in, in, employing and deploying i should say for our customers we're using the same methodology so we're we're employing automation wherever possible um which is evident in our fast track packages where we can we can deploy service manager and operate uh, and scorch within within two days and have a, um, a a near functioning system ready to 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 log incidents within two days which is um uh pretty pretty impressive um and th th from from that, um, from top down, really, um, power on platforms uh, really encompasses all of those ideas. So, very happy to um, to to be celebrating my uh, um, just over my year anniversary uh, last October. Um, uh, so, uh, absolutely um, uh, happy to be part of this team. And uh, as I say, we've got some uh, awesome uh, resources here. Um, literally written the book on System Center with Mr. Beaumont. Um, and um, uh, just uh, yeah, so give us a shout if if you need anything on 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 of those uh, disciplines uh, within the um, automation and System Center sphere. Um, Right, so what are we going to be talking about today? So what is APM monitoring first off? Um, uh, what does it stand for and what is it and how is it different from other forms of monitoring? The second question is why use it? And so that really derived from what it is. Uh, so why are we going to be uh, using it? And then what solutions are available to us within specifically the Microsoft space? And then how can we best use APM in our workplaces? So, and then we're looking at, and giving the game away here, a bit of a spoiler alert, that the two main uh, ones we're looking at in this webinar are SCOM, uh, the applicate APM implementation within SCOM, and then also Azure Application Insights. And then we'll do a demo of the hybrid APM solution um, as, and then close out with some thoughts and then uh, open up the floor for question and answers so uh in terms of question and answering if you could pop your hand up within the uh um uh the web console 
uh, you're logged into at the moment we'll do our best to try and answer any questions as we're going um, and then if you do feel brave enough to um, uh, uh, maybe voice a question at the end uh, then we can open up the mics uh, for anyone but if you prefer to just type a question just please type it in the appropriate place and we'll uh, try and uh, answer those within the uh, at the end of the webinar right so in terms of what is APM so probably the easiest way to start what it's application performance monitoring so what does all that mean in terms of differentiation from normal monitoring? Well, normal monitoring is this. It's green light. Okay, so we've got our we've got a concept in in uh, SCOM called a distributed application. So SCOM itself is an example of a distributed application. So what is that? So it is general three tier. So we've got a web end, we've got an application or a middle layer, and then we'll have a, a SQL backend or a database platform. So that's your generic, traditional three-tier application. So in terms of application monitoring, we've got two perspectives to it. It's passive monitoring and then active monitoring. I've, I've covered this in a previous webinar, so please feel free to go back and have a look at our archives and, and review that one, because we went into it, I went into it in quite a lot of detail uh, around what options we have available to us. So, and those two perspectives are active and pa passive monitoring. So the passive monitoring, as we can see here, is that we can see that the report console is working, the web console is online the management configuration services and the data access services are all running we've got an issue with the management service there i'd need to drill into that and see what's going on but we can see then from a, from the, on the other side that it is potentially to do with um uh for service accounts so, but in terms of the actual databases and everything is green now that's all well and good but what is the application what's the front end say it's a user then rings up and reports that normally it took them five or six seconds to to log in and authenticate into an application now it's taking 20 to 25 and sometimes it just stops and maybe takes and times out now we can have a look at the the service infrastructure and the core infrastructure as it were and SCOM can quite rightly come back to and say, yeah, everything's fine, everything's okay. The CPU's not being uh, a hit, the memory's within acceptable uh, uh, boundaries, uh, there's enough disk space on there, uh, SQL's all okay, um, yeah, everything's good. But the application itself is not performing well. Now, traditionally, your infrastructure teams, which I'll count myself a, a part of when I was uh, working in a production environment, would generally not have any real knowledge about how the applications function within themselves. They are effectively black box to the infrastructure teams. The only real team that that would mean a huge amount to is your application team that, that developed it or who are at least support it in, in conjunction with the vendor. Now, it's very difficult then sometimes for the infrastructure team who are primarily responsible for the server infrastructure and that encompasses all the applications that run on it um, and there's always that toing and froing in an environment where something happens from the user perspective that uh, causes a, a timeout issue and then immediately it's looked at from an infrastructure level right nothing wrong here what about the network no nothing wrong with the network okay let's have a look at the sql back end no there's nothing wrong with the sql back end we can log in and do all of that and then it goes back to the application well has anything changed well possibly yes we've rolled out a new build or no there's nothing happened but we've still got this issue so from the traditional scom perspective and enterprise monitoring that application health that inner application health what happens when someone logs on is very much black box. This is where 
application monitoring really then comes into its own. We can see from here this um, sheet from the uh, application insights. Um, I've monitored uh, as a as a as a demo the square wonderful squared up um, uh, web page, and I do apologise to the guys over at Squared Up. Um, uh, <clears throat> all the errors that I have generated on here are nothing to do with your wonderful application. I've gone in and butchered your web.config to cause some issues, to cause some issues when we're logging in and 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 other such things. So please don't take this as a um, an indication of a, of a faulty application. There is nothing wrong with Squared Up. I've used it on many, many occasions and it's absolutely brilliant product. I've gone in and butchered the website to make sure that we've got issues coming up and, and lots of denials of service and all of that sort of good stuff. Okay, so I just wanted to put that in there, the caveat. But as we can see from here, that we immediately start to throw up some different metrics. We've got available then to us, all right, well, it's taking, three and a half seconds to go through the Starpunt index page. It's then taking two seconds to go through post authentication. It's getting then enough. We can see then all the way down how long these are all taking and we can then get breakdowns. And so this is just one pane from application insights. We're going to go into a lot more from, from, from what the different um, methodologies of, of using APM is. So I think that then brings us naturally on to why use application monitoring. So there's a number of reasons. Primarily, we don't want that, okay? We don't want our analysts, our end users, being the ones who report the issues back to us. We want to be able to proactively capture those issues when they occur, and before, more importantly, before they occur, but often we, if we can just respond to them very quickly, then, then that is uh, the uh, the the way that we want to be able to do it. So it's a proactive rather than a, a primarily reactive uh, way of actually responding to that. And now, as I was pertaining to earlier, the the amount of information that's within that application is often very specific to the 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 devop uh, the, the the developers of the application or the people who support it and what we need to be able to to do is certainly using something like scom is to be able for the infrastructure team who are responsible for the server infrastructure to be notified about an issue on their servers but and have them available the information that allows them to deal with it even if they don't have to understand to the nth degree what the actual application error is they need to know whereabouts it's occurring and get that information to the correct specialist to be able for them to respond it, uh, respond to it and resolve it. So to be able to ascertain whether that there is an issue with the application layer or is it with the SQL backend or is it within the network info layer. So this is why we use APM. It also using it on the SCOM infrastructure gives us that rich data for that historical trend analysis. So it gives us memory usage, CPU usage, it gives us ables to identify trends to see if there's any repeatability or if there's memory leaks potentially on an application until it's rebooted. Um, and then because we're using SCOM in the back end, we've got that data available to us for as long as we want to retain it for as well primarily normally it's 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 the year but uh, it can often be uh, brought that your only limiting factor is the amount of database space that you want to allocate to your data warehouse um, one of the exciting things 
with the application insights has brought to us is this idea of live and near real time metrics of application performance with SCOM. We've got a limitation with the amount of data polls that we can do. We don't want to cripple our, our servers. We, we've got a limit to the amount of information that we can store on, on, on premise without negatively impacting other services. Um, but using something like Azure applications, we can actually now start to get this kind of live real time metrics of this performance. So we saw this with OMS as well, operations management suite, where the default time for a performance metric collection, say like CPU usage or memory usage, it comes all the way down from five minutes, which is the standard SCOM implementation to 10 seconds. And then that amount of information is retained for for how long you want to pay for effectively. So uh, very exciting time uh, in terms of that kind of performance metric uh, retention and also uh, a collection. Uh, so this is where then using both solutions gives us the best of both worlds. Old school. SCOM alerts, we're all used to them. Um, uh, it can be too many um, sometimes, uh, but a well-tuned environment, we'll still see these. So we're looking at, at an alert which is wrapped up um, with the SCOM information wrapper, which is where SCOM absolutely excels. And so it takes an information uh, about an issue that it's experiencing, wraps it up with knowledge, it wraps it up then with a, a link, as we can see here, it tells us exactly what the issue is, um, that it's the frame or index is slow at the network request. There we are, done. And then the link to the app diagnostics console, which we'll dig into a bit later, will actually give then give you graphical representations of what it is and also um, uh, some uh, similar metrics, similar issues that are happening, and then uh, also um, server side performance metrics as well that we want to have a look at. So. And this is where SCOM is still the king uh, in terms of, of, of monitoring your environment. Very easily I can produce a report that gives me top utilization across a group of computers which represents say may, maybe my application. So I can see at a snatch exactly what is being used, what's being consumed um, and uh, allow me to make whatever decisions um, on that. So sorry, the slide should have been potentially around the other way. The, Clicking the app diagnostics uh, uh, link will take me to something similar to this. As you can see that we've got the source, we've got the computer which is running on, and we can see the, um, uh, the breakdown where it's the network request, which is 21 milliseconds, which is causing the issue. Okay, um, but this, I've left this slide to the last one here, and this is where APM is king because it gives us the JavaScript um, uh, issues. It gives us the page that we're logging in. It's giving the request methods. It's giving us content type. It's giving us all that information. If this was a server side um, uh, alert, then it would actually be giving us the code calls and the queries back to the SQL uh, uh, platform layer that it's trying to perform and having an issue with. So very quickly, we can start to see where the issue is actually occurring. Is it at the code level? Is it at the network level? Or is it timing out on a bad SQL query? Maybe something's changed in the back end. Maybe one of the tables has become corrupted in the SQL back end and it's no longer mapping the primary key or, or whatever. Whatever the issue is, we'd be able to drill down from that. So I've pertained a little bit to the two products that I'm, I'm, I'm or solutions I should say, um, that uh, um, are there in the presence at the moment. So the first one being my beloved uh, operations manager. So um, APM was introduced in 2012. Um, as a an add-on agent. So Microsoft went out to market, looked at who was doing APM really, really well, and a vendor called Avicode uh, was that contender. Um, and so Microsoft bought uh, the IP around that and bundled that into the uh, the Microsoft Monitoring Agent or MMA, which is the same agent that we use today for OMS as well. So a very high, highly um, sophisticated agent 
with a very low footprint that runs on the servers, um, but able to um, glean a huge amount of, of data from it. Now, this kind of APM is byte profiling uh, or co-profiling, I should say, sorry, um, and effectively is information gathered by the agent and passed over by byte by byte, as it were. And so there are countless other um, solutions out there, um, uh, app diagnostics being very, very good, but it's a dedicated agent. You've got to have uh, another infrastructure along with that, and you've got to have uh, learning with that. Where SCOM really, 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 really shines is that it utilizes that existing SCOM infrastructure. All we have to do is turn it on and configure it. And you'll be pleased to know that it's a wizard based. So it's very easy to configure and utilize. The only real consideration that we have is one, is the application compliant with it? Does it work with client side monitoring, for example? 99% of them will work with server um, monitoring, but um, you've got to be a little bit more careful with client side, which we'll, we'll dig into in a minute. Um, and then the other one is your database size. So APM does have um, a negative impact on your database sizing, so it will increase it. Um, but as we'd normally only be enabling APM maybe on a dozen or so uh, IS hosts, um, then the, that we can contain that and we can calculate it more importantly. So all we'll need to do is just make sure that there's enough free space within the database on both the operational side and the data warehouse, because obviously we're going to be retaining a lot more information. So with SCOM, you get that lovely integrated reporting and alerting and the knowledge wrapping of those issues. Um, so the core infrastructure team can then be given the information to be able to deal with, with those issues. And if they can't deal with them themselves, then they can then they can farm that out to an appropriate resource that is specialist on that. Um, but with SCOM as well, the API specific to SCOM, you get that client and service perspectives on the application health. Um, and SCOM does that with other um, mechanisms as well, because you might be saying to me, well, um, web, web monitoring and transaction monitoring, that's active monitoring. Um, so where we go in and actually make sure that the response time from the page, absolutely. And that doesn't, APM doesn't replace it, it's complementary to that. Um, and specifically, SCOM is designed for on-premise applications. It is not saying at all that it is not able to um, monitor uh, Azure applications and uh, remote websites so long as they are within either the Azure infrastructure that's connected to Operations Manager or that they are on running on servers that are covered by uh, SCOM. So that could be in Azure, they could be Azure VMs, um, uh, or they could be um, pure Azure um, uh, um, applications. SCOM though is an on-premise solution for data center management. Um, yet its links with Azure obviously have lengthened and 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 become a lot broader over the time um, uh, between uh, the, the last couple of releases, certainly since 2012. Um, the System Center Advisor has now blossomed into log, um, uh, uh, log the log analytics and also the, obviously that's a key part of of OMS um, and the the data sources for all those solutions that um, uh, we'll we'll see. So as your application insights then is a different methodology of em employing APM. It's as a service. So and that's I think the key difference is that APM is this very rich application API effectively that is able to connect to your application. Now it's designed for in cloud solutions and it's not uh, impossible to connect it through to 
uh, on premise, but it's certainly a little bit more challenging than it is for SCOM simply because of the locality of it. So your application would need to be, or application servers would need to be accessible to Azure, which sometimes might not be an acceptable security solution. So this is then where this hybrid approach where we can connect operations manager and Azure Insights together to overcome those challenges. But getting back to application insights, we've got that diagnostics engine, and it's this is where SaaS obviously is 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 a key that it's flexible. If you need more, you consume more, you pay more. So and it's just a slider on that scale. Simply with and um, it is as simple as that. But with that, you get I mean, as you saw um, on the screenshot, those near real time live metrics and because it's being continually developed and invested in because it is the chosen track for Microsoft on this subscription methodology, you get wonderful things like the, the failure and performance analysis and service maps and, and all of these good things that are just continually being added onto. All right, so I'll stop waxing lyrical. I'm going to go back to my um, my baby um, uh, operations manager, which you probably heard me calling it SCOM. Um, uh, it's it's effectively the one of the recognised industry standards for enterprise monitoring, simply because of the length and the breadth of it. Uh, it's extensible. It's a platform rather than an endpoint solution. The list goes on and on. Um, I've done countless webinars about it. Bored most of my colleagues absolutely silly um, uh, with it, and I'm more than willing to um, send anyone to sleep talking about SCOM for hours and hours and hours. But what you can see here, this performance data collection is the is the number of it really. Um, we have an agent which is collecting um, whatever performance metrics, if it's defined by Windows um, or Linux, um, then we can collect that and um, take it from their uh, WS man or WMI repositories and, and squirt it into our database and then slice it, dice it, um, and um, uh, report on it using whatever mechanisms we want. Um, the other key selling point really with with SCOM or, or I shouldn't say selling point but um, is this idea of wrapping that information with knowledge uh, with having a almost a, a subject matter expert on your team for each of the technologies that you're in time I mean I'm not an Ajax specialist but I can see here at that point right okay the frame index is slow at the network request right well this obviously is something for our dev team because they're the ones who implemented the application they've just updated it something's gone wrong from the client perspective right okay I'll send that alert over to them and they can go in and deal with it and it gives them then the access so um, and because as you can see from the HTTP response there if I was to click that if this is real it would give me something similar to this okay so where it can start then giving visual um, clues to what's going through I can see immediately from from this that the um, the request is taking a long time to form but the response is 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 uh, virtually instantaneous um, and it starts giving us a little bit more information about where it's happening um, and then also uh, users and etc 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 so just mentioned earlier in terms of reporting we've got reporting services traditionally um, yeah we're doing a lot a lot more work with Power BI um, as well but uh, reporting services are still the bread and butter they're all the ones that are um, authored with the management packs they're easy to consume you don't need to go and create anything that if you import a management pack for a particular technology the Microsoft team um, certainly uh, will have created reports that reflect that information being collected or the health statuses um, and we can start making uh, judgment calls uh, based upon that information uh, on summary. So on the left hand side, you can see, um, I believe that's uh, yeah, the performance analysis. And then also on the side, we have a more detailed summary from the same report uh, drilling down into it. Okay. So turn our attention to application insights, uh, new world order. Um, we're looking at a much more, uh, because we're seeing application performance monitoring as a service we're 
hooking into an API almost. Well, we are, um, and we can see immediately that we've got a couple of failing requests there. We've got a request, you know, um, before the, the so we're getting you know 60 per failure rate. Uh, we can see immediately then the CPU is absolutely fine. It's it's idling. Committed memory. We can see that we're absolutely good on that. Um, and you can see it immediately from here. And this is um, just one of the uh, new features within it, where as application insights is really starting then to 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 gain maturity and breadth itself in that solution is here. So where we can see on the left here, it's actually starting to draw out a dynamic map. I haven't designed this. I've just fed the 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 APM demo, uh, the uh, the Azure resource i've i've hooked up our scom instance which is already monitoring that website and we can start to see that it's pulling out uh the different components at the application layer so the community squared up page the squared up.com whatever page we can see that it's a protocol it's http if i had https enabled um, then it would be um, uh, here as well and then on the other side we can see that digging into those onto the uh, I'm, I've currently clicked on the APM demo square we can see the dependency information and everything uh, being being brought out there uh, the page that we looked at earlier to, as a start we can see uh, specific requests um, and how long they're taking on there etc etc so these are just a couple of of the features we'll 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 click into these a little bit more. So, right, so what else is available to us from the application insights point? Well, because we're in Azure service, we can use OMS. So there's a solution available for us, uh, which hooks into your application insights. Now I'm not able to do this, unfortunately, because um, the demo environment that I put up uh, for the application insights is in my own personal MSDN um, subscription. Um, and uh, for the, the subscription terms, <laughs> of the MSDN um, does not allow any uh, information to be exported on um, uh, via application insights. So I can only use the basic tier, which is capped at a certain level. Um, but um, this is actually on the OMS um, live demo environment from Microsoft. So I, I absolutely suggest going um, out and have a check on that and you can see what statistics. So effectively, it takes the data from your application insights resource within Azure and surfaces it within uh, operations management suite. And then obviously from that point, you can run whatever queries that you see fit on it. And then the other um obvious contender here is power bi i did make a mention of it earlier where we can link our scom infrastructure certainly into a power bi instance and and visualize a lot of the reporting data instead of using reporting services but power bi has native um uh, links also into application insights in terms of content packs um, which we can download and use again i'm not able to um, uh, export any data out simply because i'm on the wrong tier within my msdn solution so how do we best use apm in in the workplace so we've got our web resource lovely graphic i know we've got the um our on-premise infrastructure, which consists of operations manager and reporting services. Um, and that's grand. Uh, so between those two, we can uh, get all our capacity information. We can do our APM monitoring. We can get our passive monitoring, our active monitoring, we get all the performance metrics we want. But someone says, well, I need to know, I need to have it on a great big dashboard. I need to know the, the real-time application uh, um, metrics that are happening five seconds ago, 10 seconds ago. So that's then where we start to bring in our cloud resources. So we use our application insights, APM resource monitoring to enable for us to do that. And we can start backing that up with Power BI and OMS really to start getting that very rich environment uh, together. So bring those two together and we have a hybrid solution between the two, which seems to be where a lot of the uh, system center um, solutions are going, um, where we're using 
uh, the, the, the system center components on premise, but then linking into these very rich um, uh, cloud services. So how do we integrate SCOM and Azure? Well, it's really, it's very, it's very straightforward. First of all, we have to download and, and extend SCOM just to able to do it because it's not um, by doing it. And that's literally just a, uh, a download of a management pack and an install. We import that into SCOM. Then we flick over to our Azure side. We create that as your resource um, we and then from that point it's wizard driven within scom so we go and collect it um, and uh, it's very similar to, to that of the, um, the the standard .NET application performance monitoring as you can see uh, in the, uh, the screenshot there that's one of those odds there so once we've signed in and authenticated again uh, against our azure applications uh, within azure then that will be available for us right so well let's dive into a demo of that. Um, let me pull out the correct server. So I do apologize. Um, I'm having to um, go in via a, a console session to my SCOM server simply because I'm on a surface at the moment. And um, as I'm sure you're all aware, the resolution of the SCOM console on a surface is not the best. Um, so um, Unfortunately, that's the price I have to pay for having a, a, a WYSI laptop, which I do love. Um, but unfortunately, my beloved SCOM, it looks absolutely terrible in it. So, um, and it's very difficult to, to, to see it, so certainly when I'm presenting. So um, um, that's why I'm going in against all best practice, logging onto the primary management server and, um, and doing that. So just bear with me, let's get rid of that. Right, so we can see that we've got a uh, a folder within uh, SCOM. So let's dig into SCOM first of all. We can see we've got a bunch of alerts in here, which is great. And then we've got the actual SCOM, uh, uh, the squared up uh, uh, demo. So we can have a look at here, but probably what we're more likely looking into is this idea of, of um, of the performance metrics that we, we want to try and get out here. So we can see that the average request time here. So let me just, this is the poor squared up instance that I've absolutely butchered to unrecognizable. So if there are any guys um, familiar with um, squared up or if any of the squared up guys are, are listening, um, I will be returning this application back to to normal. I did make a full backup of everything. As you can see, it's absolutely knackered. Um, but this that's why I wanted it to. So what I want to do is literally just bring up as much as I can. <laughs> as you can see, it's just it's it's really not very happy because I've I've messed around with the web config and I've taken out certain classes and, and things like that. So there's there's lots of application issues. But as you can see it's going in and in and in and in and it normally does allow me to get in a little bit more than this. As I say, I'm I'm gonna be um I just want to let's just pull out one that I've already been there. There we go. So we should now see, as you can see, because this is SCOM, it hasn't necessarily captured all of those because it's only pulling every five five minutes by default. And you can check that by looking at the um, the ruler edit properties of, of the specific rule. Um, we can go into overrides. Um, override it for the object and we can actually see that the default frequency is every 300 seconds. So which is obviously good for long-term analysis of it. Um, we might want to be able to reduce that to every minute and that's fine, that's not a problem. We can do, there's absolutely no issue to that as well. What we very want to look at is this idea of client. So we were looking at server are there so i'm having a look uh, let's have a look at the number of requests per second as you can see it hasn't picked up the 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 data that i was going through on that side because of the um of the of the polling interval if i want to have a look at the reporting side of it 
I can have a look at the client side monitoring and I can have a look at the maybe the summary performance analysis or let's have a look at the calls analysis and open that up. OK, so let's put it back to 1st of January and then run this through from where have I missed? Oh, source. There we go. So let's run that through. So if we get any data back from it, as I say, there's been very little going on in it. This is literally just a, I mean, so we can see the uh, event counts. We can go through there and go through the logons. We can see all the information coming through from there, all the different metrics that will probably mean a huge amount to the dev teams that support the application uh etc etc on there so from that scom perspective um how do we get this into uh into it so right we got got this here oh there we go look can you see it did actually get the information but it's written onto there okay so but it is only five minutes so if i want to add in another one so that's our squared up one that we've already gone in let's actually add one in now let's uh, we've got a configuration manager uh, application catalog in here so uh, I'm going to go through here now uh, upon APM oop, demo CM catalog so I created a separate management pack for that because I'm a good boy uh, uh, but as you can see we've got an error at the moment so just be wary of that whatever reason the scom or the apm client doesn't like dashes so just need to change it to an underscore in this configuration okay so um we we need to be monitoring um the is instances obviously we need to have a couple of additional management packs in they're all covered under the Tetna article they're the apm web is 7 8 and now 10 obviously as well uh uh and that gives us the objects the base objects which we can use for apm monitoring so if i just do a simple search for that i can then see this the cm catalog um, is the uh, the chosen one that i'm going to be using so i can say okay to that and say next so by default it's server side only that is enabled so if we want to enable client side we just need to tick in a box OK, we can go through to advanced so we can go through and actually say, no, give me the application failure alerts. Give me all the exceptions. I want to see everything, not just the critical ones. I can go in and I can change the intervals of the rules very easily here. I can go in and specify which critical lists that I want, uh, any namespaces specifically within the .NET um, uh, namespace uh, uh, within the, the, the application again this is for where your infrastructure guys need to sit down with your dev ops guys and say right okay what do you want monitored okay are there any particular methods that are causing issues or etc cetera, etc cetera? we can create groups in scom as well to um, designate different environments so production env uh, dev uh, test etc 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 um, but I'm just going to leave that there for the moment um, server side I can then go in and customize it even further um, and uh, I can actually add particular transaction types into there as well so go on into a specific web page I can go in and, and actually create Def, uh, um, uh, bespoke transactions again this is something where your application support team or vendors will be able to help you with to, to be able to get a really in-depth idea of that synthetic transaction but at the application layer rather than just the, uh, the, the 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 service level as it were and then client um, uh, uh, Client monitoring, we need to turn on uh, certain things. It's off by uh, uh, exception events by uh, default. We just need to remove that. That just means then now we're going to be configuring, uh, monitoring everybody uh, on there. So servers and clients alike. If you wanted to put in a specific deny type, then you could do. Um, so, yep. Yeah. So then we just enable it. 
and then as you can see here is may need to be restarted that's really important to stress that operations manager i'm just going to create that so it's it's working in the background as i'm talking scom will not go in and knack your environment it is designed to be worked with um, as a business uh, a, a business as usual tool so you can restart the agent you can restart services on uh, in in terms of scom uh, within normal business day-to-day -day, um, uh, implementation of scom without impacting the actual server that it's it's sitting on for this particular wizard to work it needs to hook into the ias um, performance metric counters and for that the application pool needs to be restarted and the is services need to be restarted um, but what it will do it will actually give you an alert to say go in and do this so i'm just going to go through to uh, our alerts page as you can see application pools recycle is required so if we look on our tasks good old scom actually gives us that task so we don't need to log on to the server we don't need to go and do that and run and open up the is console and do all of that scom is awesome it gives us that task available to us there now i um had a word with uh, mr beaumont before we um, uh, jumped on this uh, demo and I'm okay to, to actually restart this so I'm going to go through and do that okay so it's going to go and do that it's going to restart that information services and it's going to give me back hopefully some positive information telling me that it's done it but in the meantime I'm just going to close that down so what we can also do is the client side, as I mentioned earlier, system center, service side, sorry, server side monitoring client side. Server side never had a problem with it in any time. Client side monitoring is a little bit more problematical because it's very similar to the methodology that Google Analytics works with. And that is um, that we uh, inject a piece of code onto the end client uh, for it to, to do its processing from the client perspective. And then it sends the information back to the server. Obviously, some applications are not going to be compliant with that. They are just not going to be. And so what you can do is you can actually check that client side monitoring via a task, run it against it. Um, and in squared up um, of defense as well, it failed that compatibility. And that's not saying that the um, the application is faulty. It's just that it, it is not compatible for whatever reasons. So it's uh, sometimes to do with .NET versions. Now we can say it can be, so the CM catalog can be safely monitored by using the ASP not applications template, okay? Which gives us that lovely um, uh, confidence. Caveat on that though, if we have dev environments and um, dev environments and test environments, run it on that. So I think I've just managed to, yep, disconnect my uh, console session. Okay, so I'm going to come out of this. And then the other application should have restarted then. There we go. So it gives us tempted restart. As you can see, it just saves you from logging onto the machine and wasting five minutes of your life. Okay. So cool. So that's all going in there. We should start to see um, some data, hopefully, within. Um, it's created the folder um, structure. It's created the catalog data um, and the client, sorry, the server side data and also then the client. I don't expect to see data in there for at least half an hour, um, simply for the way that the beast works. It needs to, to sit in there. And, and so I'm not expecting to see any data from here, but we can certainly see it within the squared upside um, and here. So if we have a look at the alerts as well, we can see if I double click into there, that's that alert then with the um the app diagnostics page so clicking into there as you can see it's a separate console from the the native web console in scom uh, it is silverlight based unfortunately still so we do have those challenges around it so um 
you say yes to that because then that just closes that page and then opens up in its own round. So we can see if I bring that across. We can see all the lovely data that's been um, collected for us. We can see the browser capability, um, etc. We can look at um, similar events. We can see related events. And then we can also see this, the server itself. OK, so it can start to, to bring up information around around here so if we say to 24 hours we can start bringing out issues and there we are so that's that network okay so it's there's a huge amount of information there that we can see um, and gather from it um, so it really is a, a stunking system that allows you to um, uh, to be able to drill down very quickly. And also because we're SCOM, because we're our back, we're able to um, uh, give that console access out to anybody that we need to um, be able to consume it um, and deal with those issues. Right, so let's have a look at um, the how to set it up from the SCOM, or let's have a look at the one that we've set up first of all from APM squared up. So as we can see here, this is the front page, and the summary page of it, the overview. And so it gives us the uh, server sort of response times, page load times, et cetera, et cetera. So if I now go back up onto here into infrastructure, bring up a, another page, it's going to throw me out. I'm going to log back in. Hopefully it should be able to actually bring me through to that top page and give me some loading metrics. Yeah, good. As you can see, the poor old website really is starting to, so as we're trying to pull information and everything on here. So as you can see here, there's only one user, that's me, response times, page view, load time, server requests, failed requests. You can see now that's updated itself in real time. So the live metrics stream is the one that, uh, I was waxing lyrical about earlier. So you can see these are the are uh, there. So if I go back onto here, uh, so let's bring this back into here. So if we have a look at the live metrics streams, and then you can see in real time we're getting issues. Uh, we're getting um, eleven eleven, which is. Ex so we absolutely uh, hitting um, uh, issues uh, real time um, with that um, uh, with with a view over it uh, on it. So if we have a look as well with the metric explorer, these are all new panes that are being introduced to um, uh, the, the the solution all of the time. Um, we've got a metrics preview, so we can go in and actually go and say maybe have a look at. Bowser page load time, see, let's have a look, availability, see if there's any data in there. Um, okay, so availability, so I'm just flicking through on here at the moment, because obviously this is not a massively uh, populated application. There we go, so we can see some of the failures coming through there, we can see the top course. It's 403, allows you to start digging into that and getting some, some more telemetry and for more information uh, about it. So let's create a new one for the CM application. So um, what we have to do first of all, we should be able to do it from, um, let me just put in application insights. So application insights. So let's create a resource. We, as I say, we should be able to do that from the SCOM console uh, discreetly. But for whatever reason, at the moment, uh, um, within my UR and, and the capability out to applications, it was failing. So I've just found the more the easier way to do it is create the application insights resource and then link that with your SCOM infrastructure. So I'm going to call that APM uh, demo at CM catalog. 
okay yes sir. it's a valid name which is cool so i'm going to use an existing uh, resource group and that'll be the application insights one which i created for this but i'm going to pin it to the dashboard and go off and create that now that only takes about 10 to 10 to well maybe 15 20 seconds to to actually deploy so i'm just going to wait till i get verification on that and then go back into my scom environment and set up the uh this the cm application from that now i'm not expecting just as the apm in SCOM uh, can take a little while for the data to come through. It's exactly the same. It can take about half an hour and an, uh, an hour for that data to, to come through. So as you can see here, we've got the .NET application performance monitoring with application insights. We've got the wizard um, available to us. That is not by default. Um, that is on this management uh, pack page. So you need to download this, um, uh, this management pack, install it to your machine, which what it does in turn is it expands. Um, it comes up with a uh, on there. So if you so that brings up the application insults and all that does is create a create a um, an option uh, within system center management packs for us to to install that MPB. So um, so there we go. So when we're in there, then what we can do is we then have that option available to us. Okay. So I'm going to select that there. I'm going to pawn APM. As you can see, we've got exactly the same issue with this one here. So pon uh, apm no app insights demo. I'm going to just pop it into the same config manager. Okay. So again, oh, I've done it again. I'm so used to using the um, dashes for my naming conventions. So again, exactly the same search for it i'm going to bring in cm application catalog and I go through there as you can see there's very little to do in configuration wise we don't set up because the configuration is all is held within within there so what we do need to do is sign in so that's my microsoft id sign in and then what it should do is should give us there we go the cm catalog and then that's it from our perspective that is it done so what we then need to do is just let that bake for a little while and then it will start to go through that configuration okay so it is as simple as that and we just wait for that uh, object to 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 come up we'll just see if the cm catalog is that started to generate any data as it let's have a look cm performance data no and the reason why is because i probably need to restart that is service again sometimes it is a couple of times let's have a look yes so we can see that the is restart is actually recycled again so we should after this restart, I'd, I'd expect to now start to see uh, information um, and, and data populating in. So closing out, um, I think the main thing is really the ma one massive benefit that we get from it is the code level analysis of the application performance and where we get that insight into the application at a code level basis at a procedural or process basis rather than just an outward looking in black box approach to it um, it gives us that lovely data for historical trend analysis and capacity planning uh, certainly when we use SCOM um, it gives us that notification of issues i'm not saying that you can't do that with the uh, application insights but it's certainly easy to do within scom uh, but we can wrap automation onto the azure um, uh, insights side as well um, and use such things as, as oms and uh, uh, and 
other things, other no mechanisms. Um, we've got the client server side perspectives, um, and then with obviously with the the Azure application insights, we're getting that near real time analysis of application performance data as near to live as we can we can actually get it. So um, and effectively what it does it proactively monitors that performance and that is what we're trying to do we're trying to reduce the issues um ensuring that we've got good user experience and with that because we can get exactly to the issues that are causing the outages or the delays in that um, monitoring then that is where we can come to with application performance Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do is open up the floor now uh, to uh, any questions. So I'm just going to pop myself on mute for a second um, and um, just uh, uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to have a look through there and try and answer those as best as I can. Lovely. Well, many thanks for your time and uh, really do appreciate you spending, uh, sharing the time to um, uh, come join me this afternoon uh, on here. I hope it's been of use to you. Um, we'd like to thank you from all on Power On platforms. Uh, thank you, Natasha, for the technical help on the webinar. Um, give me an enterprise monitoring solution on Fine, PowerPoint and Skype together. I'm, I'm deadly. Um, so many thanks to um, Tash for that and uh, everyone who's um, taken the time, as I say, to uh, to come on to the webinar this afternoon. If there is anything at all that you want to get our help with, please um, uh, leave your details um, in the webinar and one of our team will get back to you. Uh, if it's to do with APM or to do with SCOM or to do with OMS or any of the things that we've uh, discussed today, then please give us a shout and we'd be absolutely uh, um, an amateur to help you on that. Well, many thanks for your time and um, uh, I bid you good afternoon. Thank you.